Welcome to a video on the trigonometric function values of special angles. The goals of the video are to determine trigonometric values using the 30, 60, 90 right triangle and also to do the same using the 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Certain special angles such as 30, 45, 60 and multiples of these angles and their trigonometric function values often arise. So we need to find a quick easy way to determine these function values. So let's start by considering an equilateral triangle with sides of length 2. We know that if this is an equilateral triangle then all the angles are congruent. Therefore all of the angles must be equal to 60 degrees. Now if we were to bisect this angle or form the perpendicular with the opposite side, we would have two right triangles and each triangle would have a 90 degree angle, a 60 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle. So what we want to do now is determine the length of each side of one of these 30, 60, 90 right triangles. We know this side is equal to two units and since this perpendicular bisector bisects this side, we know that the length of this side here would be one. So we have one unit here, two units here, and the question is what would this length be here. Well we can use the Pythagorean theorem to determine the length of that missing side. Remember that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Since c is the hypotenuse we would have two squared equals this side we'll call x, so x squared plus one squared. So we have four equals x squared plus one, subtract one on both sides. Taking the principal square root only we would have x equals the square root of three. So this missing side has length square root three. And that's very important because if we have a right triangle that has a 30 and a 60 degree angle in it, we know that the short side will be equal to one, the hypotenuse will be two, and the other leg will be square root three. So let's go ahead and write this one more time. If we have a right triangle, we know this is 30 degrees and we know this is 60 degrees. We can quickly determine that the hypotenuse will have length 2, the short leg will have length 1, and the other leg will have length square root 3. We can use this to determine the trigonometric function values for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Let's go ahead and do that. Remember if it helps you can remember the acronym SOHCAHTOA. So the sine of 30 degrees, well here's 30 degrees, would be opposite over hypotenuse. So one over two or one half. The cosine of 30 degrees would be adjacent over hypotenuse or square root three over two. And the tangent of 30 degrees would be the opposite side over the adjacent side, which would be one over the square root of three. And if we rationalize that it would be square root three over three. Let's go ahead and try the same from the 60 degree angle, which is down here. So the sine of 60 degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse, square root three over two. The cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, or one half. And the tangent of 60 degrees would be opposite over adjacent, or the square root of three. So that was pretty quick and easy. Now, I just want to point out that this is the most common reference triangle for the 30, 60, 90 right triangle. But remember, if we wanted to, we could divide all of these by some value if we chose to. So if we did choose to divide all of these by two, two divided by two would give us one for the hypotenuse. Divide this by two, we'd have one half. And if we divide this by two, we'd have the square root of three divided by two. I mention that now because later on when we plot angles in standard position, if we have a radius of one, which is the hypotenuse of a reference triangle, we can just use the x and y coordinates to determine the trigonometric function values. But for right now, we will focus on this one, and you should memorize this. Now let's consider a square where each side has length one. If we draw one diagonal, it forms two right triangles. And this diagonal bisects these right angles here and here. So from this we can conclude that the acute angles in these two right triangles would have to be 45 degrees. 
Now what we want to do is take a look at just one of the right triangles and see if we can determine the length of the three sides. Well, two of these sides are given. This hypotenuse is missing. So let's go ahead and find the value of x using the Pythagorean theorem. So here we'd have x squared equals one squared plus one squared. So x squared equals two. Again, taking just the principal square root, we have x equals square root of two. So now we know if we have any tr right triangle that has two acute angles that measure 45 degrees or an isosceles right triangle, the sides will always be a multiple of one, one, and the square root of two. So let's go ahead and label that information here. Again, we know that this is a 45 degree angle as well as this one. So we can quickly label these two sides as one and this hypotenuse as the square root of two. And we can use this right triangle to find any of the trigonometric function values for 45 degrees. Let's find these three. So the sine of 45 degrees, we'll use this angle. It's going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse, so one over the square root of two. And if we rationalize this, we would have the square root of two over two. And the cosine of 45 degrees would be the same. It would be one over the square root of two adjacent over hypotenuse, which we just showed if we rationalize it, we have the square root of two over two. And the reason these are the same is because the opposite side and the adjacent side have the same length. And lastly, the tangent of 45 degrees, the opposite over the adjacent would be one over one, which is equal to one. And I'll mention this again. If we wanted to have the hypotenuse equal to one, we would have to divide each side by the square root of two. We would divide this by the square root of two to get one. We would divide this side by the square root of two to get one over square root two. And the same for this side. And we could rationalize this to be the square root of two over two in both cases. But again, the one you really want to remember is this first one. Okay, that's pretty much it for this video. The next recommended video will be on reference angles. Using what we've learned here and previously about quadrantal angles, we will be able to find the values of the six trigonometric functions of any angle that is a multiple of 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. So I recommend that you watch the video entitled Reference Angles next. Thank you for watching.